Welcome to Let's Make a Character. I'm Paul Stefko. This week, I'm going to be making a character for the All Flesh Must Be Eaten role-playing game. This is a zombie survival horror game published by uh, Eden Studios. Um, and I started out this week uh, saying... I'm going to make a post-apocalyptic character. And I gave a couple of systems, four systems, to for the uh, uh, folks on the internet to choose from. All Flesh Must Be Eaten, Flat Pack, uh, GURPS After the End, and uh, Low Life, which is a Savage World setting. And All Flesh Must Be Eaten is the, uh, the, was the winner on Monday. So then I put up a poll about uh, what of the three available character archetypes I'd build. Um, in All Flesh Must Be Eaten, they give uh, archetypes which determine how you build your character. And they are the norm, who's just a normal person, not, a, not an action hero or a rugged survivalist or anything. Uh, the Survivor, which is those things, and The Inspired, which is sort of like a normal person who's been, been touched by supernatural power. The example that they give in the core book is somebody who can work uh, divine miracles. Um, and then they have other options in other source books. Uh, as you can see, The Survivor was the winner there, although it was, it was fairly close. The Inspired was coming up... Uh, behind there so uh having decided on the archetype i finally asked of which uh of the of a selection of the dead worlds which are the pre-made settings that are available in the all flesh must be eaten book uh should i use and they are they were uh, rise of the walking dead which is your classic uh, romero uh zombie movie where it's the, the zombies just start getting up and walking around one day and people have to have to survive uh, the night. Uh, Grave Impact, which had has a, uh, a meteor, uh, an asteroid hit the Earth and. Uh, or rather, parts of an asteroid, it's sort of a, the classic late 90s disaster movie where they they managed to stop the asteroid, but. Whatever it ends up raining down uh, on the Earth still ends up creating zombies. Uh, they Came From Beyond is an invasion by psychic uh, alien insects that create uh, drone zombies. And then After the Bomb, which is a nuclear post-apocalypse, a true post-apocalypse, uh, where... Uh, Chinese super bombs uh, end up making radiation zombies. Uh, and clearly, after the bomb was the winner uh, by by a margin. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing a survivor type character in a nuclear full post apocalypse uh, setting. Um, so I've got the uh, the all flesh must be eaten rulebook here on the right, and on the left I've got my. Google Doc open, and we're going to get started. So first, I'm going to go to the character creation chapter, and I'm going to scroll through how to create a character. Uh, it's a point by system, um, but the twist on it that All Flesh Must Be Eaten does is that each of the archetypes gets a different number of points to spend in different categories. Um, so you'll get a certain number of points to spend on attributes, then you'll get a, a certain number of points to spend on qualities, which are like uh, advantages uh, in GURPS or uh, edges in Savage Worlds, that sort of thing. Uh, you can also take a certain number of points of negative qualities, which give you points back to spend in other areas, and then uh, you get a certain number of points for skills. Um, so we look at the character elements here. Uh, we've already uh, chosen the character type, um, which is the next section. And if I scroll through to the survivors, uh, it gives a description. Survivors are tougher, smarter, and stronger than normal. Um, 
and it gives the breakdown of the points at the end. Uh, I'll have 20 points to spend on attributes, 15 points for uh, positive qualities. Um, that's right, they just call the positive ones qualities, they call the negative ones drawbacks. I was uh, messed up when I set up my little sheet here. Uh, and then I get uh, 35 points to spend on skills. And the only uh, restriction is that I can't buy the gift or inspiration qualities. And those are like the, the powers that, uh, that the inspired get. Um, there's an optional skill point system, but I'm not going to worry about that. So the first section... I get to spend 20 points on attributes and uh, all flesh must be eaten has six attributes and they look pretty similar, uh, pretty familiar if you're used to games like Dungeons and Dragons. So there are, uh, there is strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, perception, and willpower. Now I get 20 points to spend on these and I'm buying them up from zero, so there's no there's no free levels here. Um, and uh, normal people have a range between one and five. Um, anything over five will actually uh, cost basically triple uh, three points per level instead of uh, one point per level. Up to five, it's one point per level. Um, so I have 20 points to spend here. Uh, two is average for a normal person. So if I wanted to, I could have threes across the board, except for two things that I have fours in, but I think I'm going to weight these a little bit more. Um, I know that I want this person to be, uh, tough to handle the health hazards that a, uh, a nuclear post-apocalypse will throw at me. So I'm going to put a four into constitution. Um, and I, I, I want them to be, uh, at least above average in, uh, in agility and, 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 and strength. So I'm going to put threes into strength and dexterity. Um, now I figure uh, this character I'm thinking will be a like a like a scrounger, like somebody who digs through the ruins for for old tech and uh, maybe knows how to fix things up and uh, get old stuff working again. So I'm going to put a four in intelligence and a four in perception. Um, now that leaves me, I've spent 18 points, so I only have two points left for willpower, but we can hopefully shore that up, uh, in a little bit with some points that I get back. But for now, that's what I have now. Uh, all flesh must be eaten has secondary attributes as well that, uh, are calculated from the primary attributes, but since I know that I'm going to at least try and go back and uh, fix the uh, primary attributes up, I'm going to leave off on calculating those for now. So um, I am going to uh, move on to the qualities and drawbacks. Um, and as you, as I said, I have 15 points I get 15 points to spend on qualities, and then I can take up to 10 points of drawbacks. Uh, I don't have to take all of those, um, but that's my upper limit if I, if I choose. Um, now, one thing to point out is that points that I get from taking drawbacks can be used in any of the point categories. So I can use them to buy up my attributes I can buy additional qualities. I can buy extra skills. So uh, if I get points from drawbacks, then I'm going, you know, hopefully going to be able to go back and bump up my attributes a little bit more. But let's go through and start looking at the qualities and drawbacks. So you got, you know, things like uh, acute or impaired senses. So if you've got uh, keen eyesight or if you're hard of hearing, you would take the appropriate quality or drawback there. They've got uh, addictions, um, which may be an option, but but probably not. Adversary is a uh, uh, an NPC that that uh, doesn't like you, an enemy or a rival. 
Artistic talent, not thinking that's going to be important for this guy. Attractiveness might be, but probably not. Nor charisma. Um, clown, clown is a is a drawback that I I, I like in uh, in All Flesh Must Be Eaten and uh, other games that that use the uh, same rule system, which is called the Unis system. Um, but it's it's the guy who wisecracks and uh, never seems to take things too seriously. Uh, I like playing that kind of character sometimes, so that might be something to think about for this guy. Um, Contacts is, uh, is 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 one that I'm 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 looking at because that can be um, people that uh, this scrounger character sells their scrap to, people who can give him leads on good uh, unplundered ruins, that sort of thing. Uh, now covetous uh this is one that i'm probably probably looking at at taking at least the lowest level of um covetous means that you want something and you you go out of your way to get it um and there's four different types you can be greedy you can be lecherous Uh, greedy means you like money and wealth lecherous means that you like you know people that you find attractive uh ambitious means you want power and influence and conspicuous means you want you want fame um and then any of those you can take in uh one levels one to three and uh, one being the least uh uh hampering and three being the, the the most severe um i i like the idea of this guy being greedy So I'm going to put Covetous Greedy down and uh, I'm going to go with level two because uh, it's more than just, you know, liking wealth. It's it's I could be tempted to, uh, you know, turn on my turn my friends if the hall is is rich enough Uh, so that. That will be uh, level two there. Um, I don't want him to be cowardly. I don't want him to be particularly cruel. So I'm going to skip those. Uh, He doesn't have delusions. Um, Interesting. Okay, emotional problems. That's things like fear of rejection, depression, emotional dependency, fear of commitment. Um... I kind of like the idea of have him having a fear of rejection, which can play off of the uh, possibility of betraying people for money. Uh, that gives a nice internal uh, conflict there. So I'm going to take emotional problems, fear of rejection, which is one point. So already I'm at three points of drawbacks. So that's pretty good. Uh... Okay, I, I think the first the first uh, uh, quality that I'm looking I'm, I think will, will fit this guy is fast reaction time. This is somebody who you know uh, can can th- uh, think on his feet and doesn't get surprised very easily and uh, is able to react uh, quickly in dangerous situations because he's often out there in the ru- in the ruins where there are mutant zombies and all kinds of you know collapsing buildings and other dangers like that. So I think I like the idea of this character having fast reaction time which is two points um and i also like uh think i i want to take a couple levels of hard to kill just because uh this being survival horror you want to uh be able to survive so i'm gonna take uh i think i'm gonna take two levels for now and we may come back and add that uh add add more to that um and each of those levels adds uh, three to the life points. So I'm just going to make a note on the life points that I get an extra six points for that when I go back to actually calculate it. Um, honorable. I've already said this. This guy isn't is is probably not honorable. Um, humorless. So it's either if if I if I end up going back and taking clown, I uh, clearly can't take humorless. So I'm probably just going to ignore that. Uh, he's not lazy. This guy works. Works pretty hard. Um, 
I like the idea of, uh, in addition to the fast reaction time, this character also having nerves of steel, meaning uh, that he just doesn't scare very easily, and that costs three points. Um, then, let's see. Oh, definitely reckless. For two drawbacks, drawback points. Okay, so this guy's a scrounger. So he is, uh, he's got some, uh, whatever f passes for wealth in this post-apocalypse, he's got at least some of it. Uh, so I think he would qualify as being, um, middle class, uh, for one, one point, uh, there. Uh, let's see. So that's, I've spent eight points of qualities. Situational awareness, I think, is a good one as well. This is, you know, this is somebody who knows what's going on. He's aware of what's going on around him. Okay, and I don't, I'm not going to take any supernatural stuff. Um, so that is good. Uh, so I have, sp uh, I still have five points of qualities left to spend. Um, so I'm going to go back through and just see if there's any other things that I might like. I could take acute senses that might, uh, that might be that might be appropriate. Um, not artistic talent. Um, okay, so what the heck? Let's go. Let's go ahead and and make this uh, person at least somewhat attractive. Now, this ha attractiveness has a variable uh, levels, um, so I can basically just pick an pick a, uh, an amount and uh, pay that much, and then that sort of becomes. Uh, a bonus on any any tests that I roll to impress uh, other people that might find me attractive. So let's say that I have attractiveness just 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 one, you know, a little bit good looking, might turn a few heads, but not gonna be uh, not gonna be knocking anybody out with my looks. And in fact. Uh, it says a plus one or plus two makes you stand out in a crowd uh, and attract attention unless you somehow hide your features. So, if, well, you know, if I, if I don't want to get noticed, maybe I'll, you know, put on dumpy clothing and a, and a baseball cap and, uh, you know, not wash my face. Um, so that means I have four points left. Um, i tell you what, I am going to take a cute sight for two points and then I'm going to put the last two points into hard to kill which brings that up to hard to kill four and gives me 12 life points when I finally go and calculate all that so two three five yep 15 quality points so I've gotten five points back from drawbacks which I'll be able to spend uh, in any of the categories, but let's go ahead and take a look at skills uh, before I do anything anything further. And in fact, I know that there are some notes in the uh, the after the bomb dead world on uh, appropriate and inappropriate skills. So I'm going to scroll to that section. Give me just a moment. There's no bookmarks in this uh, this PDF, unfortunately. Here we go. So, character creation. Oh, I forgot. Resources aren't available. So, I'm going to take that one point back out. And what the heck, just put it into hard to kill for that last level of hard to kill. Easy peasy. Now, 
Computers, computer hacking, computer programming, and electronic surveillance are almost entirely unavailable, and the gun skill is usually non-existent. Instead, hand weapon knife and hand weapon bow are very common. So, there's that. Uh, it also said that uh, that survivors are inappropriate, but I disagree because, seriously, that's pretty awesome. Still being an action hero when you're killing giant mutant zombies with a bow and arrow. I like that idea. So, skill list. And All Flesh Must Be Eaten has quite a number of skills. Um, that cover a bunch of things that probably aren't always appropriate that we've already seen, you know, computers and electronics, things aren't appropriate. Guns aren't usually available because, you know, bullets are scarce. Um, but we can still go through the list and, uh, uh, see what, what, uh, pops out at us. I don't see this character being particularly acrobatic. Um, oh, uh, I should say that, uh, that skills, um, basically, uh, go on the same one to five scale that attributes do, um, with one being a beginner and, uh, five being, uh, uh extremely competent, um, higher levels are available, but I'm not going to be pushing anything, uh, anything to that point. There are skill specialties if you want to drill down into a particular field within a skill. If you don't think that uh, the skill is, if you think the skill is too broad and you want to specialize on something more, you can. It costs uh, one point and it gives you a plus two bonus with that specialty. So I may be looking to do that uh, with a few, with a few skills. Um, I might want acting for this guy, but probably, probably not. I see him being straightforward. Definitely don't need beautician, um, but brawling. We're definitely going to want some brawling just so I can handle myself. So I'm going to put a two in there just for now. Um, this person definitely has some climbing. No computer, no computer, no computer. Uh, he's not a... Uh, may, may have some kind of craft, uh, and craft, because it has the type, uh, you have to choose a specific area of, of crafting to do. So I'm not sure what kind of things this character is going to want to craft, but I'm going to put, uh some points into that just to remind myself to, to figure that out. Um, dodge is definitely important. And we'll take some first aid just to be helpful to my friends. Oh yeah, this person has some gambling skill. But haggling, that's a very important one. I'm going to put four into that. Um, and, uh, yeah, hand weapon knife is, is going to be important. We're not going to worry about teaching people. We're not going to worry about languages. Um, yeah, lock picking. I'm sure there's still some stuff that's locked in safes or whatever that, uh, that he may have needed to uh, get pick his way into. He's got some mechanic to get things going again. Notice, that's very important.
take some smooth talking. And some stealth. Some streetwise. Maybe he throws his knives as well. And let's see. I'm going to do some math here because I've already got these numbers down. Okay, so that actually, what I have down now puts me at 37 points. Um which I get 35 and then I can spend two of the five that I got from drawbacks. Um, so I think I'm going to leave it there for, for skill points. Um, I'm going to go back to look at craft to decide what kind of crafting he wants, he wants to be good at. Um, and yeah, we'll go with, we'll go with weaponsmith so that, if he pulls out one of those elusive and valuable guns, he can get it working again. Even if he's not really great at shooting it himself, it's a good trade item. So that will work out. So um, that means that I have three points left in uh, drawback points. I'm going to go back and improve my attributes. I'm going to put two of them into willpower, bringing that up to a four. And then I'm going to bump my perception up to five with the last point. Now at this point, I can go back and recalculate uh, my secondary attributes. Just scrolling down to make sure there's nothing left. Yep, there's nothing left after that except to decide what kind of uh, gear I have. So we'll, we'll calculate uh, the secondary attributes. So all, they're all derived from the primary attributes by various uh, formulae. Uh, for life points, you take your constitution and your strength, add them together. So that's seven. And you multiply that by four, which gives me 28. And then I add 10 plus three for each level of hard to kill. So a total of 15. So I add 25 for a total of 53 life points. That's pretty respectable. For endurance points, which is determine how you know long I can, I can hike, um, and uh, basically they represent fatigue and, and, and strain and that sort of thing, you take your con plus your strength plus your willpower, so that's 11, and then you multiply that by 3, and then add 5, which gives me a total of 38 endurance points. For my speed, I take my con constitution plus my dexterity uh, and multiply that by 2. And uh, that is my speed in miles per hour. Uh, and then to find the number of yards I can run in one, uh, in one second, that I would take half that number. So my con is four, my dex is three, that's seven. So my speed is double that, 14. Finally, essence pool. Essence is sort of your like mana points. If I was a, a character that had uh, uh, powers, I would fuel them with essence. Um, I don't, so essence isn't as important, but there are certain effects that will drain essence, and if your essence runs out, you die. Uh, luckily, those are pretty rare outside of supernatural settings, but basically to get that, I add all of my primary attributes together. So my three strength, plus my three dex, plus my for constitution, for intelligence, five perception, and four willpower means that I have an essence pool of 23. Now, that is 
basically it. I can decide on what kind of equipment I have. I'm not going to have a lot because this is a uh, post-apocalyptic setting. Um, I, I scrolled too far. Now I'm trying to get back. Um, so I'm going to definitely have a knife. Probably going to have a backpack of some kind to hold hold stuff. Um, might have some rope. Uh, and uh, some, some lock picks of some kind. Or, you know, the classic fallout bobby pins may be appropriate in this in this setting who can say um but other than that i don't really see anything i don't can't really think of anything that is that important to this character but i am going to go to um the equipment chapter to get the stats on my knife um so we'll say that I have a, uh, I have a large knife, and then I have two small knives for throwing. The large knife will do a D4, which they just give you the average of the D, the the damage dice, uh, in case you just want to use that times my strength. So it's a D4 times three. So on average, it'll do six damage on a hit. Now, as you can see, I've got 53. So uh, if I was stabbing myself, it would take me a while to, uh, to die. Uh, for the small knives, they do the same D4, but they get multiplied by, why did I put a six there? That's the wrong number. Um, they get multiplied by your strength minus one, so they're just multiplied by two. Um, there's an encumbrance value for, for equipment, but I'm not really... Uh, not really carrying all that much to, to track that right now. If I start weighing myself down with loot, that would be, that would be when the, those, those values start to come into play. Um, but basically I think that about finishes the character up. Um, it's actually a relatively quick system. I could go back and look for more drawbacks if I wanted a few more points. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty comfortable taking this character out as a starting, uh, survivor. He's already more powerful than the setting assumes because they don't want you to use survivors, but I think that's dumb because, uh, survivors are awesome. And, uh, I, while I appreciate a good, uh, uh, TPK and a good, uh, <laughs> winnowing of, uh, of uh, the character roster, I, I like my 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 characters to be a little more survivable. So um, I think I'm just going to leave it uh, leave it there with this character. Um, that is it for making a character for all flesh must be eaten. Um, I thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw, please uh, click the like button. Um, favorite, uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I do another one of these shows every week, so you'll find out as soon as they go up if you're not watching live. If you are watching live, thank you. Um, and if you really like what you see, you can uh, support me at uh, my Patreon um, at patreon.com slash Paul Stefko. You can follow me on Twitter at Paul Stefko on Facebook and Google Plus. I'm there as well. 
Uh, I put up polls uh, just about every weekday on uh, Twitter and on Google Plus, where you can actually vote for what kind of character I will make that week and answer the various questions like I uh, showed at the beginning of the episode. So follow me on Twitter and on Google Plus uh, for those. And until next time, thanks for watching.